Do you want to really understand more about the partition keys and sort keys within DynamoDB and how you can use them to best make use of your database? In this video, we're going to be diving deep into all of that to help you have a better understanding of how to use Dynamo. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we're going to be diving deep into how Dynamo keys work with our partition key and our sort key, and how we can best utilize those to make use of the querying inside DynamoDB. As a quick recap, you always need a primary key on every row of a DynamoDB table, and this needs to be completely unique. You have two options for creating this primary key. The first is that you have a completely unique partition key. This means that you have one value that is always unique for every single row. That's useful for when you've just got an ID and is more easily transferred from if you've been using SQL databases in the past. The second option is you can have a partition key, which is an identifier that groups these data fields and rows into partitions. And if you wanna learn more about partitions, check out the card up here, because I did a previous video on how partitions work and you can then combine that partition key with a sort key. This sort key is a different value, which is usually applicable to a more specific value, which allows you to narrow down the searchability for that row. This might sound a bit vague, but I'll give some examples and hopefully it'll become a lot clearer. So for example, you always want to choose a partition key that has a low cardinality, which means that there aren't many things that are grouped together with that same partition key. A good rule of thumb is to try and keep it below 5% of your database at max assigned to a single partition key. So for example, if you're choosing a e-commerce website to build a database for, a good idea for a partition key could be a customer ID because you're likely to have hundreds of customers. Therefore, one customer is never going to have 5% of your orders. On the other hand, if you're running a small consultancy firm where you have, say, three large uh, customers, having customer ID as the partition key would probably not work well because you're gonna have three main groups. So it means that about 30% of your database is assigned to each partition. And that's not great for hot partitions, which I've talked about in the video I linked earlier. A better use case for this might be job ID. So for each company, you do certain jobs. So that whole company is broken down into separate jobs and you have a lot more jobs, therefore the partitions are smaller. As well as the partition key, we then have a sort key. And the really interesting thing about sort keys is that we have more queryable values. What I mean by this is with our partition key, anytime you do a query on Dynamo, you need to say, I'm gonna query this where the partition key is exactly equal to the value I'm searching for. If it isn't exactly the same, then we won't find that record. With sort keys, we have a lot more options. We could say where the sort key is greater than this value or is less than this value. We could say where the partition key starts with this bit of code or these values and there are a lot more options. This is where 
Dynamo can get really powerful and you can come up with some really inventive ways of doing queries by having smart sort keys. For example, you could have a DynamoDB table which contains all of the movies. You could then set the partition key to be the director. So you could do a query and just say, get me all movies where the director or the partition key equals Spielberg. This will get you back all of his movies. But we could also set the sort key to be a date. This means we could go get me all Spielberg movies. So get me all movies where the partition key is Spielberg. And then also query where the sort key is greater than 2010. So that will bring back all of his movies, but only if the sort key is greater than 2010. This could be used as well. You could say between a certain date and another date. So between 2000 and 2010. This allows you to have much finer control over the data you are querying on. The next thing that we can do with this sort key, which is really powerful, is what is called creating compound keys. This is where you layer extra bits of data into your sort key and then use the begins with query to filter down things. So for example, if you are looking for, I don't know, if you had a list of supermarkets, you could have the partition key being the brand of supermarket. And then the sort key, you could have being something like state, hashtag city, hashtag town. With this, you could say, get me all supermarkets where the partition key equals Walmart and the sort key begins with Washington. This will get you all of the Walmart in Washington. You could take this one step further by querying where the partition key equals Walmart and the sort key begins with Washington hashtag Seattle. And what that's going to do is it's only going to return any of the tape, any of the records for Walmart that are in Seattle. And you can go down the line and add more and more of these compound values to create like a hierarchy of attributes. This can be used for other things as well. So for example, if you have a commerce store, you could say the customer ID is the partition key. And then the sort key will start with the type of data that's being stored and then a hashtag and then some more information. For example, you could have customer ID 123 as the partition key and then the sort key could be order hashtag 578, order hashtag 246 and both of those would have their unique order data but you could also have customer 123 but with a sort key of address hashtag primary and then that is their primary address. You could also have address hashtag secondary and, there, and therefore get different addresses stored under the same customer ID. This could be used for other things such as card details or preferred or items or anything else you want to store against that customer specifically. This gives you loads of flexibility because you could say, get me all of the customer data by just querying on the partition key. This will get you their orders. This will get you their addresses. This will get you all of the data you have about that one customer, but you can also filter that down. So you could say, get me everything where the partition key equals one, two, three, which is the customer ID and the sort key 
equals order hashtag 789. And that is going to get you just a single order. You could also go with just begins with order and that will get you all of their orders. You could take this another step further and have order hashtag date. And this means you can go get me all of the records where the customer ID equals one, two, three, and the order and the secondary key, sorry, is greater than order hashtag 2019. What that is going to do is it's going to get you every order from that customer that is more recent than 2019. There are loads of different ways of using this and some of the ways you can come up with can provide really, really powerful and efficient querying for your system. In this video, we have looked into partition keys and sort keys and how you can combine them together to make your primary key. And you've also learned about how sort keys can be used in a really powerful way. They allow you to reduce and narrow down the data that you're querying on. We can do that by just using a simple sort key of, for example, date, or we could use a compound sort key where we combine different attributes, split up, and then can use queries such as greater than or begins with to filter all of the data on that partition for a particular attribute or after or before a certain time or date. If you've learned something new in this video, please make sure to give it a like as it helps more developers just like yourselves learn about AWS and specifically Dynamo. If you want to stay up to date with how these different attributes work and how the keys and the partitions work, then I've linked in the description a download you can get, which is my Dynamo DB querying and keys cheat sheet, which should make all of this much easier to understand and implement in your applications. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe down here as the next deep dive video is going to be on global secondary indexes and how they can be used in your applications to increase the parameters that you can query on. Thank you and I'll see you in that video.